Oh, good morning, everybody, and um, welcome to uh, a very damp and wet morning this morning. Uh, just in another local park down here at the back of Mango Hill to uh, to be in. And uh, a week ago, or sorry, three days ago, this was uh, brown and looked very dusty. So um, yeah, it's amazing what a few uh, feels like feet of rain have done, and. Um, yeah, we, we praise and thank God for, for the rain we've received. And uh, praying that hope falls in, in other areas that really desperately need it uh, too. This morning I just wanted to uh, start with a bit of a question. Uh, ever uh, woken up in a daze or been in a daze or, um, you know, gotten lost in whatever you were doing and, and not really sure what was going to happen next or what you were doing next. And I'm sure we've all um, can relate to that in some way or form or another. And, um, you know, I think sometimes the older we get, uh, sometimes, the, unfortunately, the more foggier we get. And uh, I remember just such an occasion once um, from friends and I were on uh, Mount Roland in Tassie. And we were just uh, out, just on a, having a hike, doing a hike, um, as you do as young blokes. And the weather, um, if you don't know Tasmania, is very changeable, uh, especially the higher you get up into the high country, it, it can change just on a, on a drop of a hat. Um, and it can be quite dangerous. And a lot of, a lot of people don't, a lot of people underestimate it and they get lost. Or even, you know, in some cases have fallen off the edge of cliffs and died. And at Mount Roland, one, one day, we, we're doing, walking, doing this walk and all of a sudden fog rolled in. Completely pea soup, Visibility was for about two metres. And you've got a decision to make. You can choose to carry on or you do the safe option, which is what you do is you just hunker down, you sit down in a group and you just talk the rest of the day away until the fog eventually lifts. And it will eventually lift. You do eventually get to see uh, where you're going and what was ahead of you. And I just wanted to share a passage um, this morning from, from Mark chapter 16. And it reads like this. Verse 10, um, she went to the, well, before that, sorry, I should, should say, um, the woman, women turned up on, on Sunday morning, very early, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb, and on the way they said, who's going to roll the stone away? When they got there, they looked up and saw that the stone had been stood aside, it was already gone. The angel looked at them and said, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen. Now go and tell his disciples. And so it then records in verse 10, So they went to the disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what happened. But when they told them that Jesus was alive and he had, they had seen him, they didn't believe her. See, grief can do a lot of things to us. And here's Mary and her friends walking to a tomb that morning in a fog of their own. What's next? Well, the practical part of them goes, well, the stone's going to be pretty big. How do we get that out of the way, firstly? But what's next is the bigger question for them. What's going to happen? They go and tell the disciples that something amazing has happened. And the disciples in a fog of their own misery and own questions of what next, don't believe them. Because everybody is looking in the wrong place. The angel says to the women, you seek Jesus, but he's not here. And it brings to my mind this question. Are we at times seeking Jesus in the wrong places? Because yes, Jesus was laid in that tomb. But Jesus had been telling them continually that he'd only been there for a short time. It was only a bor borrowed place for him. It wasn't a permanent place for him. And yet they go and seek him at the tomb. The disciples don't even bother to seek. They just stay where they are in their own misery. And I wonder, is that true of us in our own experiences in life, in today, in what's going on, all those sorts of things? Are we seeking Jesus in the wrong places? I don't know. Or perhaps you've found Jesus through, this, through these times and you've, 
and you're excited by the fact that you have found him. Records in Deuteronomy. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you search with your whole heart and all of your soul. In Proverbs he says, I love those who love me, those who diligently seek, they will find me. Jeremiah in 29, 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. And then Jesus says in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, it will be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. My friends, where are we looking for Jesus? And for each of us, that can be a, a different place or a different way. But we all need to be searching for Jesus with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul. And like the disciples who sat in a room in their own fog, they could have sought Jesus together. The women went together. The short point is we, we individually need to search for Jesus, but we need to do it also corporately together. We need each other to help each other along the journey and ask those questions, who is going to move the rock? Let's seek Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the rain that we have experienced. Thank you for loving us, Lord, and making a way that we can seek and look, after, look for you. And knowing, Lord, that when we find you and we knock at that door, that you will open it. There's no no entry sign. Because the cross is the entrance to your kingdom, Lord. And we thank you for that. So dear Jesus, lead us in this day. May your Holy Spirit continue to guide us as we seek you out. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, <coughs> I've gotten through that because there's these little creatures in this park now who are seeking me out. With the rain comes the mosquitoes. Never mind. Look, you take care, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you again very soon tomorrow. Take care and God bless.